I'm Dala and today we are tuning this leaf. I still have down payments on this but uh, we're gonna be swapping out the inverter anyway so yeah. Is it a bad idea? Yes. Is it gonna be exciting? Hell yeah. Let's go. Okay, before we get started, I thought I might mention a few things. This vehicle is better upgraded. It has a 40 kilowatt hour pack. This is mandatory. You cannot do an inverter upgrade without also upgrading the main battery. Because there is a fuse inside the battery and that fuse is too small on the 24 kilowatt hour packs to handle this power increase. So, now that I've got that out of the way, let's get started. Okay, so this right here is a complete uh, motor inverter and PDM from a 2019 Nissan Leaf. This is the 110 kilowatt version. Uh, but uh, today we're only be gonna taking the inverter section and that's this small piece here. So I'm just off camera going to be dismantling this one uh, because you don't want to see me do this twice. So yeah, I'll just get the inverter right out of there. Okay, here we have it, the power inverter. I've uh, placed it carefully so I don't damage uh, these connectors, these three-phase connectors going down to the motor. And you also have to be careful not to damage these ones as well. But um, the reason I'm not switching out the motor plus the inverter is that I want to make this as um, cheap as possible because most of you upgrading at home, uh, you will just order an inverter. You won't be ordering a full uh, like motor inverter PDM setup because that would cost a lot of money. So I want to make this as budget friendly as possible. So now I can uh, start to mount this in the car. It took me like um, maybe 20 minutes to get this off with the motor on the ground. But now that we're gonna be doing this in the car, it's going to be much harder. So, let's get started. Okay, so now that we have the inverter free, we can start to actually put it into the leaf. So this, I'm gonna assume that this is the actual starting position uh, for you. So, uh, the first thing that we're gonna be doing is to disconnect the 12 volt battery and uh, also disconnect the service disconnect switch, the high voltage one, because uh, we're going to be working with some high voltages here. Okay, so with the plastic removed, you can see what my goal is here. Uh, this metal piece right here is actually removable. There are a few 10 millimeter bolts all around here. So I'm gonna be removing those and then we can lift this big metal piece out of the way. Okay, so now we've got a fair bit of room more to maneuver here. Uh, I am still kind of scared about the AC compressor. It's gonna be really hard to get the bolts out here that connect the inverter to the motor. But according to the manual, you should be able to detach it and kind of pull it up, so... Yeah, we'll see about that. Actually, now when I'm thinking about this, uh, this is starting to look a lot like the charger, fast charger retrofit video I did a while back. So I think I'm just gonna skip ahead to where I have the power distribution module removed. Uh, if you want to see more uh, just go watch that previous video and there are also other excellent videos available on youtube how to remove the pdm so let's skip ahead okay so i was victorious uh, now we're at this stage which should look familiar to you if you watch the quick charger retrofit video uh, we can already spot some differences between the inverters uh, this old one is bare metal 
but the new one has some sort of uh, vibration slash noise dampener on top of it. Uh, but I will continue with trying to get this inverter out. Uh, there's really not much to say about it. It's just unbolting stuff that goes along it. And uh, yeah, then unbolting the, the three phase wires that go down to the actual motor. So I will do that. Okay, so this AC compressor is, is <laughs> like the hardest part so far. I have disconnected the low voltage wiring and high voltage wiring. So now I'm gonna get that out of the way. And then I'm gonna be removing the bolts that actually hold the compressor. And then I'm gonna pull it out and attach it with a rope so it, it is out of the way. Whew, a lot of work. This is the next goal. I'm just gonna lower you down there so you can see what I was working on. I removed the three phase wires going into the motor. Here you can see them. I don't know how good this will show up on camera, but there is three of them. Okay, so this is something you don't see very often, how tiny the motor is in the leaf. It's like all the way at the bottom, this tiny, tiny EM57 motor. Uh, now let's look at the differences on the inverters. Okay, here we have them, the two inverters. Uh, here is the old one, and now you're gonna be seeing why this upgrade is uh, not that straightforward. Uh, the old inverter, the wiring connection that goes with it, is this square type connector. And uh, on the new inverter, we have a round peg. And I don't know about you, but when I was a kid, I learned pretty quickly that a square peg doesn't fit in a round hole. So that's gonna be interesting. And uh, what else is new? Uh, they changed uh, the coolant layout to simplify it. Uh, so on the old one, this coolant outlet sticks out a bit, but on the new one, it's integrated below, like so. And uh, they also removed a fair bit of material, like this whole section here is completely gone on the new inverter. So they have they did something for sure. I actually have a bathroom scale here, so I'm gonna be uh, checking if there are any weight differences. Uh, one final note is uh, I have the wiring diagrams here. So uh, on the left is the old and on the right is the new. So they added a second temperature sensor. You can see here that the old one, it had one temp sensor, but the new one actually has, has um, another one 
so they measure both the motor temperature and the coolant temperature so that's a new thing so there's a connector underneath this inverter that also needs to be mapped into the inverter so yeah there's a lot to do but uh, let's weigh them and the bathroom scale died even with fresh batteries it wouldn't come back to life so oh well we're gonna have to live without that info but I flipped the new inverter over so here you can see the new temp sensor so we will need some wiring for that and uh, luckily if I go over to the bench uh, this uh, motor that I used uh, for the swap it came with a section of wiring loom so this one at the end is uh, the one that actually goes into this um, temperature plug so that's nice and I also get this new plug that I will have to splice in so uh, I don't know maybe I'm gonna try lifting in the motor first before I do this um, big wiring change because I really want to reattach the AC compressor I have it hanging here uh, and while I have these uh, splash guards off I had to remove them in order to take out the AC compressor the car is lifted up and it's not fun to work at so before I splice in this I think I'm gonna throw in the new inverter Bang! Okay, so with the new inverter in, I'm just gonna skip all the reassembly steps until I get to the wiring changes. So, let's skip ahead in time. Okay, I am done. Inverter is in. And now, for the fun stuff, the wiring. So, I've uh, taped these up here, and uh, I am happy to report that the colors of the wiring are exactly the same be between these generations. So, this is the patch cable that I'm going to be splicing in. Uh, very lucky that I have this. Uh, if you don't have this cable, don't attempt this upgrade. Uh, so here is the old connector that used to go to the inverter. So now I'm going to chop this one up and solder this one in. Be extremely careful here. You don't want to mess this up. Double check everything even though that the, the cables are the correct color. different and that's this one And there we go, the new harness is spliced in and ready to go. The camera died, uh, it didn't like that long time lapse. But now that I have the wiring complete, we can go and mount the PDM. 
And then we can start this thing. Exciting! Okay, the PDM is back on. Uh, before we start this, or before I tighten everything down, I want to just start it. But before I can do that, we need to address the cooling system. So, Nissan in their infinite wisdom decided that it was the time to change how the coolant hoses are routed. So, uh, I'm gonna be needing to adapt these two hoses to match together. And also, uh, here, the outlet needs to uh, join with another one that is hidden deep down there. Yeah, you can barely see it. So, I need a new coolant hose that runs to there. So, uh, yeah, I'm gonna be thinking about how to solve this now. Okay, I have a plan. I'm gonna steal this uh, coolant outlet from the newer style motor and I'm simply going to unbolt the one on the left and so that I can use the original rubber hose. So, yeah, I'm gonna do that. I managed to construct a hose from two hoses. So we just put a copper pipe in the middle and uh, this hose now should reach all the way back there and still connect with the one on top. But I need two hands in order to mount this, so I'm gonna do that. Okay, it's a new day and uh, I've got the car completely back together. But before I glue the PDM shut uh, and put the windshield wipers into place, I thought I would fire it up and uh, see what we get on the dash. Let's go. And it's alive. Sort of. Uh, I have some fall code active, so I'm not gonna be starting yet. I just uh, fired up uh, Leaf Spy here, and uh, these are some old codes, but I'm just gonna press read DTTs, and uh, let's see what we have. We have a new one. Uh, it's a P3179 motor system fault code. So. Yeah, the inverter is not happy where it's at. It's probably missing some CAN messages or something like that. But um, yeah, I'm gonna try starting the car now. And uh, when I'm doing that, I'm also gonna be filling. You can see I have this uh, canister here. So I need to fill the coolant system and bleed it because it has been open. So cooling system is bled and the car is back together. So now it's time to take this on the road. Wow, it was successful. So now with the new inverter, uh, you shouldn't drive it at this point. I just reverse it out of the garage. But uh, now I'm gonna do the resolver coding and we also need to fit a can bridge in order to get more than 80 kilowatt out. Uh, but this is enough for one video to keep all the mechanical stuff there. So we will touch on the software in the next video. But thank you so much for watching and um, massive thanks to all my Patreon supporters. This research and development wouldn't be possible without you. So, see you in the next one. Bye.